your introductory video. I've never seen anybody do something like that. So it was uh, very um, insightful and uh, it was great. Yeah. Thank you. Th that actually was for EDSE 435. Mm -hmm. So that was a requirement for that class. Well, it was something great you can show. What's great about all this, and don't let me talk too much because you'll be here till <laughs> midnight, uh, okay. is, is that you create all, the, all these materials and they're always going to be useful to you. Yeah. You know, like getting a yeah. job or introducing yourself. I think that was a great piece and good for you to, for you having to do that. It's a great idea. So Thanks. I'll be, I'll shut up. You tell me everything. <laughs> you know. Okay. So let's get started then. Okay. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Let me know if you can see it. I like your backdrop. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're out in the wilderness. I just, I just put a, 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 a simple background. Can, can you see my, my screen, my screen mm -hmm. sharing? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's get started. <laughs> I don't, we only have 40, 40 minutes for the zoom. Or 45, I believe. Okay. Well, that'll keep yeah. us honest. I'll be quiet. <laughs> no, it's okay. But, okay. Okay, so my this is my portfolio review. I'm going to talk about my artwork. As you, you did see my artwork, correct? I did, yes. I, I'll, I've I'll seen just, everything. I'll just skim through it uh, throughout so I can uh, record it in the, uh, in the Zoom video, okay? And then if you want me to uh, talk about something more, let me know, okay? Okay. Okay. okay, I'm going to talk about me, my art teaching philosophy, my teaching experiences, my unit overview, my guided practice, and my final PowerPoint. Okay, so my artwork. I'm going to do my artwork. So as you saw, this is uh, the, the, I did this last year, Transcendence in the Garden. Um, I did this this year, I finished it, uh, Seed of the Nebula. An entity in the in the wilderness. Um, some. I like them very much. Thank you, thank you. I I do very different topics. As you can see, this one's more more um, fantasy. Fantasy, and this one's more childlike. You know, more yeah, childlike. What I, what I what I think is going to be a great thing for just go down there a little bit. You know, where you had the the buildings. Okay, that one. That shows great skill right there, knowing perspective. So that's going to be a great example for you. Okay. Okay, I'll continue. Um, some paper collage. I did these with a National Geographic magazines that I, I was given. Um, some drawings I made, which I can... Uh, these are actually drawings of uh, classes I've taken. And there, I think that I thought they were pretty okay, so I put them in the my artist portfolio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some perspective I did in classes too. Um, some colored charcoal pastels. This one is more of my artwork. Uh, I like uh, artwork about nature and life and death topics of of, of such things. And um, some mixed media sculpture. I do a lot of mixed media. Uh, paper mache with a uh, cardboard and little things. This well, is very, a, you have a lot of diversity. Yes, yes. I love art. That's that's my passion. <laughs> so some more paper mache, some ceramic sculptures, the storytelling with photography. I like so I do, that very much. Thank you. Uh, some Photoshop, a lot of computer work. Uh, this one is an animation I did. These are just clips of the animation. Um, it's just a pirate that finds a a sacred stone that takes him to space, and this and he he touches a star and it gives him powers. <laughs> so something something the kids will like. Mm -hmm. um, some watercolor. These are watercolor sketches. I want to do these into paintings eventually. Mm -hmm. um, some darker art. Some dark art. Um, some of these have do have meaning. Like for example, this one is about the struggles I've been through 
it's about uh how the the syringes and the the hospital did oh, you see for, did you your, see? for your brain injury yeah. right yes and i had so many operations and i'm just i've i've been through a lot so you're a survivor yes i <laughs> think yeah and, thank you you know the thing is when you've gone through a lot you're resilient yes you're more resilient I like so, your quotes a lot too. Oh, thank you. I just Googled them and I thought, oh, they fit. <laughs> no, I, I, I love quotes. Yes. Some, some landscapes, some landscapes, illustration backgrounds, um, a circus sun, an illustrational, a painting. And this one was for my uh, studio gallery. For my bachelor's gallery mm, that mm -hmm. was the centerpiece and for your, um, for your bfa yes um coexistence it just means the uh how the sun you can call him god or if you're religion if, if you're not uh it just gives them li it gives life it provides life to all the uh to every the all the animals including humans it's mm -hmm. just a coexistence of everything combined creates life in my artist statement yeah I, I liked your artist statement i thought it was very much from the heart and 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 uh very you know insightful thank you thank you okay so i'm going to continue so my artwork so about me so my education um i went to a communal college i transferred to Cal State Dominguez Hills and got my BA in studio art and now I am in Long Beach, Cal State Long Beach, getting my credentials and teaching. Um, my teaching experience, which I will talk a little bit more in depth as I have more slides about each individual one, uh, the Boys and Girls Club, Orange County Therapeutic Art Center, and now I am a substitute teacher at Compton Unified School District. Um, uh, some community artwork I've done is I did, I, I do continuously do brain injury. I work with brain injury patients at the Rancho Los Amigos National Rehabilitation Hospital. I will talk that, about that a little bit more. So my art teaching philosophy, my art teaching philosophy. So I am a progressive, uh, I have a progressive philosophy. I am learner centered approach. It's all about the students and my belief. Um, I believe that uh, the development of art skills are very important and it allows you to be creative in all we do. Uh, I, um, I put this quote right here, for mm -hmm. the things we have learned before we can do them, we learn by doing them. Aristotle said that. Mm -hmm. So it just means that the more you do, the more you learn. The more you practice, you can learn absolutely everything. So I am a strong believer in uh, doing is learning. So um, my personal, I, I, I like to, I would like to, inc I incorporate uh, to the students their art, in their artwork, um, uh, their personal values, their cultures, and their individuality. Um, I want them to create, to be create, to be creative expression, to create creative expression. Um, I want them to uh, engage in class activities together, discussions, and do teamwork like a family in the classroom. Very progressive. Um, I will, I will achieve self. Uh, they they should achieve self-motivation with my positive guidance. Uh, I will, mod with positive, by positive guidance, I will model attitude, behavior with my artwork and my, you know, conversations about my artwork and the art world and mm -hmm. what the possibilities of that art world can be. Well, um, let me tell you, let me, let me say something. Well, from yes. what, all you're telling me, uh, these are all, uh, behaviors that you know will benefit students because of you being a uh, student-centered and yes. that from what you 
you know, you're showing your own artwork. I just wanted to mention that particularly, that all students will be drawn to your skills. And I always believe that if you can't do it, you can't expect them to do it. So right. I, I think that your artwork is very, um, will be very uh, good mm -hmm. for students to, to see and, and say, well, you know, here's somebody like me and look what he's done. Right. Meaning you. Yes. <laughs> you know, you're a great role model. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. So okay. I, will, okay. I, will, I will model attitude with my artwork. And okay. So uh, I believe besides uh, modeling and uh, creativity, I will, I personally will be, uh, have equal opportunities to all my students, regardless of any differences they may have. Uh, depending on their race, it doesn't matter their race, their ethnicity, anything, uh, their disabilities, as I have a disability. And I've, I've been through, I've seen, uh, I've seen my, I've seen some, some life of my own. So I understand what students can go through and I have understanding of that. So I'm very sympathetic to students. Um, you you're very compassionate. Compassionate, yes, of course. Yes. And uh, use all learning styles as much as possible. Uh, written, writing, visual, and kinesthetic. All learning styles. And then some one-on-one, -on -one, if there is still required more help. <laughs> I'm big on one-on-one. -on -one. So boys, like, boys and girls club. So, uh, so my educational, my teaching experience, this was uh, first Boys and Girls Club. I did this as an internship for Dominguez Hills. Uh, I did two Boys and Girls. I did Carson and Markham Middle School. Can you see the pictures? Are you yeah. able to see them? Yeah. yeah. Um, so these are the pictures of Markham Middle School in Watts, a very low, uh, how would you call it, budget school, very needy needing resources school um they they i i was doing drawing and painting with them but i saw that they love more uh hands-on activities so i was doing a lot of paper mache with them and they loved it uh they did pinatas they did little sculptures they were they just had fun so that was my first experience and this this was uh back when i was in my ba so i learned oh I like teaching. I I wanna oh, I yeah. wanna keep pursuing this. So, so this what started it, and then I got a job at the Orange County Therapeutic Art Center in Santa Ana. Uh, it's an I was an after school art teacher. Um, I was teaching grades first fifth grade, um, and I did two D three D art lessons. We were doing painting. I I was I like to do more. Um, uh, not so much drawings as uh, but more uh, mixed media objects mm -hmm. because the I, I've noticed that the kids like interacting like wow I made this I can't believe it and they get this excitement out of this artwork that they no, made really, it, it, when you're doing the first through fifth I think that this kind of thing is much more appropriate yes uh, because kids don't really well they do start yearning to learn to draw better than their symbols in around third or fourth grade uh but you know after fifth grade they can learn drawing skills right formal right. ones yes <laughs> so let's continue so this is uh art in the community that i teach uh at, at the hospital continuously um i get called once in a while every time they get a uh, new brain injury patients out outpatients. So you I went do, to Los, oh, I mean, Los Amigos yourself? Yes, that was where uh, all my recovery happened. Okay, okay. So yes. you're kind of you're giving back. Oh yes, for sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and I go once in a while and then I so I ask them what they want, the patients, and what kind of animals do they want. And so I draw them with charcoal in a small little canvas and I provide paints and then I guide them and it helps me it helps me learn how to deal with people with disabilities so that's very helpful 
And let's continue. So now I'm a substitute teacher at Compton Unified School District, where this is the district I went, I grad, I went to my whole life. So that's why I am a Compton Unified School District substitute teacher. I co I've covered all grades from K to 12. And I was there for about a year before the quarantine, which I am not able to sub anymore, unfortunately. I know. And yeah. And uh, I teach a lot of art classes at Dominguez High School. I became really good teach. I became really good friends with the art teachers. So, so I you, get you taught at uh, Dominguez High School, even though you were not, you didn't have your credential as a substitute teacher. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so they, the uh, I will ask the teacher. Uh, I will follow along with their projects, and occasionally. They, their project finished, so I will create my own projects, like one day projects. Oh, okay. So right. yeah, but it was very, it, it's it's been helpful, teaching a high school art, and it it, it has uh, reinforced that I want to be a high school art teacher and not uh, another uh, lower grade art teacher. As yeah. I I was a art teacher for elementary, and. It was okay, but I don't see myself doing this. Mm -hmm. I see myself doing more high school. When you're in a program for middle school and high school, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so my le three lesson. I actually could see you doing middle school too. I've actually. When I watched your video, I, yeah. and that was with younger students, I, I really could see you doing middle school, really. Yeah. You have the right personality for that. Very cheerful, very... Is well, you're very nurturing. Nurt okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I really thought you were going for a middle school job, but uh, you, could do, you could actually do either, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the district, to tell you the truth, the district that I sub for, Compton, I've done many middle school classes. And it's very difficult, very, very difficult. I don't know if it's you the have district. To, you, have to, you have to know how to classroom manage those guys. Yeah, it's just... It's, it's not your thing, you don't think? I don't know, it's just class management is not something I'm very skillful in. You, you think you're, do you think you're a little too um, compassionate? <laughs> I think I am. Like, uh -huh. if there's a problem, I want to talk about it, you know? To the students. So you're not you're not a good disciplinarian. I just can't scream at. Well, I'm, it's not about screaming. Oh, you don't scream. I know. Uh, I know. Classroom management is, um, it's a whole. I I don't think you guys get enough of classroom management, honestly, in school. Yeah. I really don't. But anyway, let's move on. Okay. So my three lessons, my unit overview. So my unit overview is about. I'm all about uh, focus on the fundamentals of teaching, which is the uh, using the elements and principles of art with by by using the students' interest, their culture, to be able to give them interest into their artwork. So that's all me. Most of my projects are based that way. So my first project will be about line, very basics. Uh, line and pattern it's a zentangle about who i am so they are going to draw a zentangle about incorporating images about their interests about their culture i want them to also use their culture as in their race mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. something like that so the second project is the per personal imagery still life they're using their culture again composition value and we were learning we we're learning color charcoal pastels yeah this, you know, this, can, I, can i stop you right yes, here yes. i saw that video and the only weakness that i saw was that you really didn't say uh you know when i combine red and green which are complementary you can see that it creates a different value yes, yes. and then in the lesson and I, I wrote this on the, in my other evaluation. You started using brown, which I thought defeated the, 
the, the, the demonstration. Maybe I'm getting something wrong here. So kind of correct me. When, when did I use brown? In, in the, well, in the demonstration of the uh, Memento Mori, uh, they were doing some of their drawings and the demonstration I saw, Luis, was you using complementary colors. And I'm only saying this because I think you have to repeat the academic language okay. by saying, okay, red and green, what do you see happened here? Uh, oh, see. you can't see either red or green anymore, can you? What do you see? I see gray, I see brown, I see, you know, when you do red and, uh, I mean, when you do red and green, it's a different kind of dark value than if you do, uh, you know, uh, blue and uh, blue and orange. I mean, those kinds of things are aha moments for students. Yes. So just keep that in mind because they don't know what they don't know. This is the core of my philosophy is they don't know what they don't know. And it's up to you to fill in those gaps with using the academic language that yes. you want them to understand. So it can be, academic language can be a definition, but it's better if it's, if it's done in the context of the teaching. You know, I, I'm just, I, that's all. I, I said that on my evaluation. So I, I just thought I'd bring it up because that's the one I saw was the, the, um, the pastel. I mean, other than that, I, I thought it was great. But uh, anyway, I just thought I'd mention for you to think about, you know, why we don't use brown. We make brown. I see. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. I will make note of that. So uh, the value study, the my, uh, my guided practice, we are going to scaffold to this project with this art color theory and contrast schemes, which I'm very big on. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, um, so it's about basic color theory, complex color schemes, planning and processing the image. There's a lot of steps in this project but I'm going to help them throughout the whole time, throughout the, every step of the way. And let me continue. So what I thought, what I taught, uh, I did a guided practice about value as you saw in my video. I did charcoal pastels, step-by-step -step instruction, which I could have used a little more as you tell me to for that for that complementary yeah, colors. Uh, more more uh, academic yes, language. A little bit more. Enforcement about why people don't use brown. Right. Yes. And um, the uh, value scaffolds to other drawings and paintings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in other art projects is just big value and color is big. It will lead to art theory. Mm -hmm. And uh, just for the video, state standards. The sum of the state standards are, I'm just going to go quickly, experiment, plan, and make multiple works of art and design to explore a personal, meaningful theme, idea, or concept. So all of the projects that I'm doing um, about planning, document the process of developing early stages, ideas, uh, technology. I'm very big on technologies. Utilize inquiry methods of observation, research. Mm -hmm. research and experimentation and exploring familiar subjects through art making. So they're going to research about images they want to incorporate. Uh, they're going to get um, references on, they can use their phones to get references. Um, so very big on technology and yeah. let me Let me mention yes. that uh, there should be an art history uh, one in here because nothing happens without them researching art history, you I know, see. having a historical reference and that you reinforce that we learned everything we know from somebody else's idea. Okay. And, uh, you know, you stress, really stress the art historical part because they love it. They okay. absolutely love it. I mean, you started that with the Memento Mori. I, I thought you, sh you could like with a PowerPoint, go a little deeper with that. But um, you should have a, a visual art standard that covers that. I mean, I think these are great, but 
just be aware that um, students absolutely love art history. They think that makes them adults. <laughs> okay, thank you. Some essential questions. Uh, does art require to have meaning? If so, what kind of meaning? I love that one. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah. Does the audience of an artwork change the way you create an image? That's a great aesthetic question. What makes a visually pleasing image? And how will a visually pleasing image convey a strong emotions to the viewer? These are great, great essential questions because they hit on um, the, the top one is, does it, is it meaningful? Yeah. And, uh, and does the audience of an artwork change the way you create an image or see an image? Um, or does it, does the artwork, does the, does the, does the viewer have to know what the artist intended? And that's a huge question. And usually the answer to that is no. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you encourage their own interpretation through what they see. Right. Okay, okay let me continue to my uh, less, my PowerPoint. Okay. You did see it, right? So um, no, I didn't. I didn't see the PowerPoint because oh. I, I saw it on another email. But yeah, go ahead. Okay, I didn't okay. see this one. So color theory. So it's a very long PowerPoint. So I'm gonna skim through it. If you want me to slow down, let me know. Okay. Uh, we're gonna talk about lowbrow art, which is pop surrealism. It came out in Los Angeles. Um, it, it incorporates a lot of surrealism and uh, oh, a figure, yeah. figure, figures like Kermit the Frog and Mickey Mouse and all these little known uh, characters, but they change them in a way so it does not plagiarism. So um, the, the mentor artist is Greg Simpkins, which he graduated from Cal State Long Beach. Oh, really? Okay. Um, have, you, have you heard of him? Um, no, I haven't actually. He's very big in social media. He's, uh, he started with street art and now he does very amazing canvases and merchandise. Um, this is his family. These are some of his, uh, of his artwork and his toys that he creates, his drawings. Well, he's very talented, that's yes, for sure. And uh, I'm just not going to do a guy. Uh, 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 a man. I'm also going to incorporate a woman. So Ami Sol, she is actually South Korean and she's very young and she is very influenced by anime. Uh, mm -hmm. Anime is very big right now with the kids. It's been big for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, really? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, anime has never gone away. It started in the 80s and 90s. So I'm going to start with basics, the color wheel, um, hue, and primary colors, secondary colors. I will explain to this and to them. Oh, before I forget, um, I'm going to give them a, a handout that they can, uh, they can do, write their notes down as I'm doing the PowerPoint. Okay, that's so, great. So there's color theory, lowbrow art, all these little example when you say when you say hue what do you mean uh i mean color as in like the actual so it's, color it's another word for color it's another it's that it's the it's the how would you call it the proper word for color yes you're right yes so this is a a page that they're going to use to uh write but so are they going to take a pencil and and I'm, I'm, go I'm going to have a color pencils on the table. Okay. Group, I'm going to have a group tables and they're going to write it down, color them as I'm doing the PowerPoint. That's great. Yeah, that's great. So also, also, before I forget, I am going to do a, this is a big, a big project. So they're going to have a timeline checklist. So everything they're going to check, 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 checklist, including all the vocabulary of the diff of this of this section and the past okay. sections. So this is going to take a couple of periods at least to do. Oh yeah, it's going to take a good three three weeks. Okay, to do. good. Or three, All right, maybe Got a it. month. 
Got it. Um, I also, since I live in a, I substitute teach in a Spanish community. Uh, that those are the only uh, English language learners that I have. I actually did Spanish versions of all of the uh, all of the worksheets. If I were to work in a community with a diff, uh, another English language learners, I will I will provide those sheets as well. Okay. So primary, so as we were we're doing the basics, secondary color, tertiary colors, they will write down these on their note helper sheets. Uh, color theory, color schemes with pictures, for example, that gives them examples of what's a color scheme color harmonies, uh, value, which they had already learned previously, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. refresh, and how color is being used, uh, monochromatic. This, this is a painting of Greg Simpkins, the oh. mentor artist. So his, his monochromatic color is green, so everything is green. Perfect image. Mm -hmm. Tint, tone, shade, with uh, some images of uh, that of they will know, such as this is SpongeBob, and uh -huh. they're, they're they're gonna get like, oh, SpongeBob. <laughs> you know, you on this one, you could say, what famous artist did this originally, and right. you could show them. You know, yeah. this is one of those uh, missed. You don't want to have. I call them missed opportunities. So, right to show. Um, the the uh, original his name is failing me right now he one of my favorite who who was the one that wrote did the first one um the artist the it's called the scream let me google it yeah yeah uh, yeah um got it it's one i've talked about this artist a, a million times but I, I love the way that and we should emphasize do you see somebody is taking taking a, an original work of art it's very famous and very acclaimed and they're changing it that's a huge philosophical uh -huh. uh, issue okay. and you could say to them how do you feel about this should the artwork be changed should an artist go in and revision another artist and you could you could say well in terms of pop culture that's what they do you know who's the artist uh, that i'm I'm missing the scream. Uh, I'm just having a block. Um, Ed Edward Munch. Monk, yeah, Monk. Monk, it's not yeah. Munch. It's Monk. No, it's okay. not Munch. It's Monk. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me continue because. Yeah, go ahead. The time it, it, it did did Jeff did it did it did it block them after a couple minutes? Because I only get forty five minutes. So tone and shade, this is just a basic summary. Natural neutrals using brown. Oh, yeah, using her, yeah. There are more examples of the artist. The, the same mentor. artist, yeah. Yes. Uh, this is her painting with uh, analogous colors, color harmony and color schemes. This is excellent. Uh, complementary using uh, video games so that they can see. Uh, split complementary, trade attic. This is a very big PowerPoint. So that's why I made sure to give you, them. You, you can move on. I mean, I I, I, okay. I I get what you're doing. Okay, so warm, cool. Let's just move, move to the next thing. Let, I let think me... it's great. I think it's one of the strongest PowerPoints I've ever seen. Thank so you. it's gonna be great. They're gonna love this. So let me continue. Okay, so now oh, this, Tyson, this, yeah. this is the... Uh, Great that you're doing the psychology of color. I love that. Oh, psychology? Yes. Yes. It's part of... I, I, I want to include it as part of the art uh, color theory. Yeah. I, maybe is, is it part of color art theory? Co art theory? Color theory? What is what? Psycho psychology of color. No, it's not part of color theory, but it's part of, it's a big part of how we respond to color. And I will talk about how cultures see different colors. This is a great opportunity to talk about that. Like, for example, China, China 
uh, red is lucky. Mm -hmm. But for other cultures, it might mean something else. Sure, and it's not l considered lucky in. Oh, in, it does. It's not. I mean, in in uh, contemporary American culture, no, it's considered an emotional color like anger or passion or something like that. Right. Right. That but, um, would be a great assignment is to uh, have them compare and contrast some cultural, uh, you know, associations. Great idea. So this is my lesson. Uh, this is step one. Uh, they're gonna, they're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna show them how to do little sketches in their sketchbook. Mm -hmm. um, they're gonna require to have sketchbooks. Uh, they're gonna do sketches of the color uh, of their theories, different theories that I presented to them. And they're gonna do a couple of them. So these are, this is my examples. These are just rough, but the rough versions will turn into, we are going to uh, put them into a, a, with paint, with paint. We're mm -hmm. gonna paint them. Mm -hmm. So these are the painted versions. Of the, the okay. rough sketches these are the painted versions mm -hmm. that's what they're gonna do and we're gonna use these uh, later on this is part one of the project mm -hmm. so after this we are going to refresh with VTS visual thinking strategies we're gonna do a visual thinking strategy with the mentor artist painting there's a lot of image information there is yes, this is, yes, that's Greg Simpkins. That's amazing. And uh, there's a lot of visual information here. We can do so much v BTS. Really amazing. And I also provided uh, a picture of him with his painting. Mm -hmm. And and a I, little close up. I absolutely, um, I'm amazed at that bird. Yeah. <laughs> and he, yeah. he actually graduated from Cal State Long Beach. I did not know that. But that's a, that's a photorealistic. Yeah. And it's acrylic. You would think acrylic. it's oil, but it's acrylic. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so that's my VTS. You know what I would talk about with this image? Well, I would talk about scale change and how as a surrealist, he really, he really relies on scale change because yeah. we know what the scale of a bird to something is. But what he does is he completely throws that out the window and by making the bird so much bigger than it, what it would be and how it dominates it really takes it to another level so talk so, about scale change with scale that change. One. got it so th that so that's my vts in the middle of my my uh part one of my lesson mm -hmm. and then part two will be actually doing a painting. So we're gonna use those, uh, these uh, paintings we created with little paintings of uh, of their th color art theory. Yeah. Uh -huh. they're gonna and, and they're gonna do actual drawings with them. Actual, and, and they're gonna pick, so, they, so I have examples here, dark light and a, a hue contrast. These are rough. So they're going to choose one of them, the one that they like best, mm -hmm. and they're going to do different varieties of one. So I like my airplane one with a um, top of the beach. So they made, I made different ones. I get Clouds. It. Uh, so you don't want to stick to one uh, version of an image. You want to change it up to see which one you like best. So these are my examples. I did two examples just for the presentation. So these are dark lights and hue contrast. So these are, uh, these are, I gave them, um, I gave them note cards so that they can draw them here and then they color them and they can just glue them in their uh, sketchbook. Great. And then, um, oh, after this, they're going to use their, their final drawing and they're going to do a, a uh, peer feedback okay. using the Feldman model of art criticism. Mm -hmm. So before they even start painting the actual painting, 
of this version, they're gonna do a peer feedback so that they can understand if they need to switch it or it's fine. So in my peer feedback, I'm gonna use description. What do you see? Their yeah. partners I, are gonna- I know, I know all about this. Okay. I've taught, I've taught it for a million years. Okay, but, so you know, I don't have to describe it. Say that, you know, art criticism, that's art criticism. Yes. And that's where you need to really push the idea that using academic language in okay. your descriptions, or it, it will facilitate the time you are willing to spend with an art image in a museum or whatever, that, you know, you've got to go beyond the 30 second glance. And if you have the academic language to do that, which specifically starts with an understanding of what you see, and then how they're using things like the elements and principles and so forth and so right. on. Yeah, I know all about him. I met okay. him a couple of okay. times. <laughs> So um, after, they, after the art criticism of their little sketch, they are going to move on to an actual painting. They're, they're going to do a painting of their sketch. So this okay. is my example. Mm -hmm. And this is example number two. Okay. And uh, after this, they're going to use an artist statement. Oh, I, provide, I, I, I provide them with a guideline so that they don't know. I don't know what to... Right. Yeah. So it's like I you you know how to you know what to write, you just fill it in. But I want like a good sentences of course. Uh -huh. And then I have a Spanish version too. And then they're gonna do a peer interview and they're gonna present their artwork as a peers. Their peers are I, gonna I just I'm so I'm so happy to see you doing this sort of thing. A lot of teachers don't go this in depth and it's just, it's great to see that you're willing to do that. Yeah. And then I'm gonna do a assess, it's just a page, I just print it out. I, they just fill it up. They, for example, there's questions here. Number one, add primary colors to the color wheel, secondary, and they get points mm -hmm. and and it's very, you know, self-explanatory. So I have a, a an assessment too. So yeah, that's that's my that's my lesson. Any well, questions? I think you should do one slide that is dealing with composition. Composition. You know, like the focal point, movement, balance, asymmetry, symmetry, all those things. At least have one slide that goes beyond color because when you're showing your artwork, you can point out where the focal point is, where the directionality is, you know, if it's horizontal, vertical, symmetry, whatever it is, diagonals work very well, but at least have, I would put a slide in here that deals with, you know, how it's organized. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, you're kind of overlooking that in favor of color theory and I understand why, but you are working with why does the artwork look good? It's not just the color, it's the way that you composed it. Right. Um, well, if, um, I will do that, what you told me, but even though that I uh, did it in last projects so that they can refresh, right? Is that oh, a good well, idea? Yeah, just have a reminder then. A reminder, yes. Yeah, just just say, oh, by the way, we're not just throwing out composition here. Right, right. <laughs> okay, good to know. So that's that's it. It's beautiful. I love and, it. Anything else I missed that I didn't talk about? Um, not that I know of. Um, I think I, I'm just like I'm fine. It's uh, do you um, do you have anything you want to add? Hmm. Well, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I believe that incorporating their their culture and their individuality is empowering to the students. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I and would it, add I would add something to that, okay. and that would be the influence of artists in their culture. Right. That you focus on as these were the trailblazers, you know, like Sikiros. And um, um, 
you know, um, oh God, you know, there's a bunch of them that yeah. uh, uh, Frida Kahlo, Frida Kahlo. And all of those really giants that that were Hispanic, and you're going to deal with mostly mostly with Hispanic kids. Uh, it's it 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 would it's very important that you do an art historical overview of all the artists, contemporary artists in particular, okay, starting okay. in modernism. Um, who was Frida Kahlo married to? I, I'm telling you, I'm losing it. If you don't, if you don't practice this every day, you forget. But, Diego, um, Diego Rivera. Diego Rivera, yeah. So I would do a, a PowerPoint that dealt with who are the people in our culture who have made so much, who had so much influence over um, other artists or making Hispanic art so important. And then if you could, it would be great if you took them to MOLA, oh. the Museum of Latin American Art in Long Beach. That would be a great field trip. Yes, it will. Yeah, because it, it elevates the Hispanic culture. So if you want to have them come from their own culture, you start with the artists, personally, I think. Right. That are, that are not just chained to being Hispanic, they are uh, world influences. That sounds like a great idea. Yes, I will do that. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually going to do my student teaching in the same school I taught this. Okay. So the, unfor the unfortunate is that with, we're going to be doing Zoom. <laughs> I know. I don't, how is that working out? I don't. I know I'm doing it with my other three student teachers, and um, you know it's 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 not like face to face. I'll tell you that much. And because it's not mandatory, they don't have to come. Oh. Uh, you know, there's I don't know what's going to happen in fall if it's going to be more. Uh, you know, you're graded on your whether you show up or not, because it's really kind of sad to see only two or three students show up to any class on the Zoom. Well, I mean, the beaches are already open. So perhaps <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the fall, school will come back a little, maybe one or two days of the week. I don't but know. Not, not <laughs> at Cal State, it's not. Um, really? I don't know if Long Beach Unified is planning on, on going back. Um, it's troubling. It's very troubling. Yes, it is. And I'm sorry that you have to go back to do student teaching online. It's not the same. I know it's not. I, I love one-on-one -on -one with the students, interacting I with the students. I tell that. When I yeah. watch the video, I can see that that was really your thing. Yeah. <laughs> and you won't be able to do that. So um, I know the whole thing is just so sad. I don't... It is. It, uh, it's, it's sad for you guys because... I've already been a teacher. I've already had my career. But when you're starting out in your career, I mean, this is the last thing you wanted to happen. If somebody could have said to you, oh, by the way, you're not going to be able to see the students that you're teaching. <laughs> anyway, you'll get through it. You're, you're, you're um, very strong, Luis. Yes, and, yes. Uh, I, you know, I'm giving you all the points, okay? Uh, thank, you, thank you so much. Okay. So um, I'll send you what my, my evaluation was, and I've already talked to you about some of it. So um, I just put it in writing, I thought. I, I know I wasn't required to do that, but that's what I do. So. Okay. Well, All right. Well, Marka, it was very nice meeting you in nice Zoom. You. <laughs> in and, Zoom. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that you, you know, uh, very professional presentation. And uh, I'd almost keep these, uh, this way of working with the student, with the candidates, because I got a much better idea of who you are uh, doing it this way than I would if I had a few minutes to go through your materials. Right. You know, add on the day, which th this would have been a, a lot of work and not many people would have seen it. So I liked the way this was. Thank you. Yes. So, okay. Do you like it this way? 
did you find it was better? Uh, yes, yes, yes and no. I wanted to show my paintings in the real in, thing. In the real thing. I wanted people to see my art in the real. Yeah, I, I get it. Or yeah. more people would see it rather than just right. one. Right. Yeah, there's pluses and minuses, but maybe they could do a hybrid of some sort. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm hoping that they will give us a art show for this, for this, for these students, for the credential students for this year. I'm hoping. <laughs> I am. Uh, I hope so too. I know. I know. Well, anyway, uh, I'll let you go and uh, thank you for, uh, I think we got through this pretty good. But thank you for your time, Marco. Okay. And uh, good luck to you. Thank, thank you. Okay. Okay, have a great day. Have a great day. Okay. You too. All right. I don't know where to sign off. All right. I'm going to. Or you can end the meeting. Okay. Okay. I'll see you later. Okay. Have a great day, Marco. All right.